Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over a system in which when you look at an object on screen it will tell you what object it is that you are looking at. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So in this example I've got three different actors over here which for me are just cubes but you can obviously change them to be what you want and I've given them different names. So when I look at this one it's going to put door on screen as for me this object is a door. If I look at this one it's going to say apple and this one is going to say cube. So again, in this, I can name these different actors, giving them different names, and then it will put that name on screen whenever I am looking at them. Or alternatively, you could do it so it just gets the name of whatever static mesh it is you're looking at. For example, if I had to look at the floor, it is named floor. If I look here, it's going to be named right arm static mesh. So again, this is just going to get the name of the static mesh or actor, basically just the object you are looking at. It will get its display name and put that on screen like so. But I personally prefer the other method which is going to be giving a name which we have decided. For example, this looks a lot better for me. But again, this is what we're going to today. I'm going to be going over both examples, starting with this one here, which I'm looking at. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've made it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a blueprint interface to keep this working nice and efficiently. And so we can easily pass through the name of each object to put it on screen. So to do that, I'm going to right click, go to blueprints and get a blueprint interface. And I'm just going to simply name this one get name interface. As that is all I'm doing with this is I'm just getting the name of the object. I'm going to open that up straight away. I'm going to name this function to just be get name. And I'm going to add an output on here, naming this name. And the variable type is going to be a text variable like so. So we compile and save that. And this is now going to be all we need to do in here. So this interface is going to call this function, which is simply just going to get the name, returning the name in this return node like so. If you want more in-depth explanations on how Blueprint interfaces work and what they are, I do have a separate dedicated video going over it. But it will also make a lot more sense when we actually start using this later on. So I'm going to close this. And what we want to do now is we want to create our actor, which we're going to be using. So what I'd recommend doing is maybe make a parent actor and everything else is a child of that or just do this code in every actor which you want to display the name of. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm just going to name this item BP. And what I was saying by creating a child of was if you right click on this, you can create child blueprint class like so. So what you might want to do is just make this item BP your general item which you're going to have because that will then keep all of the code, for example, get in the name, static mesh and everything else you'd want in there. And then you can just change it according on the child meshes. But obviously that's something which you'd want to set up in your own system to make it working perfect for you. But we're going to open up our item blueprint here and I'm just going to add in a cube as my static mesh and that's all I want in here. Then I'm going to go over to the event graph and then select class settings and we want to add in our interface. So we're going to add interface searching for get name interface like so and on the right you can now see we have interfaces get name. Get name is the function we just created. So we're going to double click it to open it up so we can actually determine what this function is going to do. And like I say, I just want to get the name. So I'm going to right click on name, promote a variable, naming this name. So very simply, when this function is called, it's going to get the name of this item, which is this variable inside the blueprint and put that into the return node. Meaning when we call this in an external blueprint, we are going to be getting this name variable like so, which again, it's just a nice, easy way to do this instead of casting. So we're also going to select the name and hit instance editable or hit the little eye down here, which means we can change this for each different instance of this blueprint because I'm only going to be putting in this one blueprint. But obviously, if you have it in different blueprints, you can do it differently for you. So compile and save that. You can obviously set a default value for the name as well if you wanted, but I'm not going to bother right now. And that's all we need to do in here. Just set up the function so we can get the name of this item. So we're going to close this as well. Then we're going to create a widget to actually display this text on screen. So I'm going to right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint. And I'm just going to simply name this one name widget like so and open it up straight away in here. Very simply, I'm just going to get some text and I'm going to put this in the center of the screen. Again, you can obviously put this absolutely wherever you want. So it could be the center bottom, center top or center middle like I'm doing here as well. Again, customize this however you want and I'm also just going to give it an outline of five as well, just because that's what I want. And also because I have it in the center, I'm going to change the justification to be a line text center as well. So it's always going to stay in the center of the screen and look good for me. And again, I'm going to compile, save that. 
then go up to where it says text under the content I'm going to bind create binding because again we obviously want to be able to change this text to be dependent on whatever object it is that we are looking at and this bind is going to be basically the same as the function which we created in our interface it's going to be get text the return node is simply going to be right click on the return value promote to variable and this is just going to be name another text variable just of the name which we want compile save and we don't need to do anything else with this because what we're going to do is we're going to access the widget set this name variable to be what it is depending on the name we got from the blueprint which will then change the text on screen so again that's what we need to do in here so we're going to close this as well then we're going to open up our character blueprint and start doing the actual coding behind getting the name and putting it on screen so linking all of this stuff together which we just set up so for me it's going to be content third person bp blueprints third person character and you can see here what i've also done is i've just changed my camera to be named fpp camera so i'm in first person obviously just use the camera which you have named a lot of people make this mistake they think it has to be fpp camera which they can't find that is just a custom name i've given it so for you it might be follow camera or first person camera again just use the camera your player is using and then i'm going to go to edit and project settings go down to input once it's loaded down here and we're going to create a new action mapping you can see i've already got it here so let me delete it so i'm going to hit the plus action mapping naming this what i want which for me is going to be update name and i'm going to change this to be mouse x and mouse y and what this does is it means that it's going to update the name whenever we move the mouse so this just saves us from having to do off event tick which can obviously be quite demanding and not very efficient so what i want to do is just check it every time we move our mouse because we're only going to be looking at a new object whenever we move our mouse so that's why i'm doing it then so i'm going to close that once i've done that like so then in our event graph what we're going to do first is right click and get event begin play or if you've already used it just go to your event begin play hold down s left click to get a sequence with then zero going to the code you have now and then one going to this new code we're about to do and the new code we're about to do is a create widget with the class being the widget we just created which for me was name widget, which is again, is the one putting the name on screen. Right click the return value, promote it to a variable, naming this name widget reference. That's so we can nice and easily access it later on without having to keep casting to it or creating it. If we create this variable reference to it, we can easily access it to change the text. Drag out this and get an add to viewport to also put it on the player screen so they can see the actual name as well. So we're gonna compile save, and now let's set up the code for getting the name. So underneath this, I'm going to right click, add a custom event, naming this get object name. Out of this, what I want to do is get a line trace by channel, as you see there, and the start and end is where the line is going to go from and to. So I want to get my camera, which for me is FPP camera, drag out of it and get the world location of said camera and then drag out of the camera again and get the forward vector so we know the forward facing direction i.e. the direction the player is looking because that's obviously where we want the line to go in the forward facing direction the player is looking in we're going to drag out of get forward vector and get a vector multiplied by a float and this float here is how is basically how long you want the line to be so i'm going to set it to a value of 500 so it's going to be 500 units long but you can obviously set this to be whatever you like now get world location is going to go into the start of the line trace and it's also going to go into a vector plus a vector adding that to the multiplication there which goes into end and now the reason we're doing the addition there is just to keep it going in a straight line forward so i hope this makes sense so again what we're doing is getting the camera location as the start of the line and then going forwards 500 units for the end of the line so we're just drawing a nice line from the player's camera forwards 500 units to hopefully hit an object so we need to see if we do hit an object so we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch connecting the execution to the line trace and the condition into the return value because this return value will fire off true if it does hit something and false if it doesn't and the out hit we're going to come out and break hit result and we're going to extend this here all we want to access from this break hit result is the hit actor so we see what it is that we're actually hitting and looking at and out of this i'm going to get a does implement interface i'm going to close this like so because again what we're doing is we're now seeing if the object we're looking at has the interface we implemented which for me is going to be get name interface because we only want to try and get the name of an actor which has this interface in because otherwise we don't want to get the name of it obviously because that's why we haven't given it the interface 
So we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch with that being the condition. And the execution is gonna go into true of the first branch. Cause again, if we have hit something, we then want to check to see if it has the get name interface. And if it does, we then want to actually get the name of it. So we're gonna come out of hit actor again and search for get name under get name interface, get name message there, or just whatever the name of the function is, which you created, connecting that into true of the branch. I'm just gonna double click that to get some roots there to keep it nice and organized. And as you can see, this has the output of name like so. So what it's gonna do is call the function we created, which is simply inputting the name variable inside of the blueprint which we're looking at to get the correct name which we want. So to actually set it on screen, we're gonna get name widget reference, drag out of this and set name, which again is the variable we created inside of the widget, which is bound to that text. So whatever we change this to, it's gonna go on screen. So we're just gonna connect the name into the output of the get name, like so. So again, we're looking at an object. If that object has a get name interface, we're going to get the name and input that into the text on the widget on screen. So that is what we see. Then we also wanna make sure that we set this to blank when we stop looking at something, because if we look at something, say an apple, then look up to the sky, we don't want it to then keep saying apple. So what we're gonna do is get a widget reference, drag out of this, set text, or set name, sorry, is what I named it, and we're simply just gonna leave this blank. Because if it's blank, then it's being set to empty, so it's not gonna display anything on screen which the player can see. And this is gonna get connected into both of the falses of both of the branches, like so. So connect it into there, like that. So basically, if we're not looking at anything and not getting the name of anything, the name is gonna be empty, like so. So we can compile and save, and that should be the code done for actually getting the name and putting on screen. The final part is to, again, just call this function whenever we move our mouse which is why we set up the action mapping. So we're gonna right click and we're going to simply update name under action events there. Now you can just put this straight into the line trace like so, but I prefer to just use a custom event in case I want to use this somewhere else as well. So out of press, it's simply going to go into get object name perfectly like so. So if we compile, say we can hit play to test this out. You see, we can't see anything. If we move our mouse, we're also not gonna see anything on screen, but we also do need to make sure we put these objects into the level which we created. So we put in item BP here, and you can see we can give it a name. I'm just gonna name this one cube. Let me get another one, name this one apple. I'll just do the same names I gave at the start of the video. And I'll put another one in, giving this a name of door, I think I did. So if I hit play, come over here, you can see if I had to look at this one, it's gonna say door on screen, look away, it comes off. Look at this one says apple and this one says cube. So you can see this is working perfectly now to get the name of the actor which we are currently looking at and putting it on screen, updating perfectly as it should. Again, it's only updating when we move our mouse. What I'm also gonna do is show you the other way where you're just gonna get the name of the item you're looking at without having to input the name manually. So all we're gonna do for that is I'm gonna select all of this and copy and paste it to just duplicate it down here because the code is very, very similar. We're just changing a few things. I'm going to name this custom event get object name to compile that. All we need to change really is we don't need to see if it implements an interface so we can get rid of that. And we then also don't need to use the get name interface like so, because again, this is where we're not using interfaces. And then we'll just connect these in like so, move them back forward a little bit like so. And we're going to come out of hit actor out of the brick hit result again and get display name. And you can see that's a string, so all we're gonna do is just drag that into the set name, should convert it into a text automatically for us, and then that is all we need to do. Very, very simple. It's just gonna get the display name of it and put that on the screen. So we compile, save, change this pressed here to get object name two instead. Disconnect that. You'll see what's gonna happen now is it's just gonna get the name of what it is we're looking at. For example, floor, right arm static mesh, wall seven, item BP, item BB2 and three, so on and so forth. But again, I much prefer the other way, which is the first one we did. So I think that'll be it for the video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have the system in which it's gonna display the name of the item we are currently looking at on screen like so, updating whenever we move our mouse in a nice efficient manner as well. Also using blueprint interfaces to pass the item name through different blueprints like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.